peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, the word is out about Jesus. He is known by everyone to be a healer. He is a healer who heals for free. And he does so completely. No medications afterwards. No physical therapy. He heals completely. And so in our gospel lesson, we learn that as the healer goes to heal one daughter of Israel, he is approached secretly by another. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Jesus, what you've done for others, do for me. If you could just touch my little girl, she will be healed and she will live. This is what Jairus, a ruler of the synagogue, a very influential man, by the way, asks of Jesus as he lay stretched out on the ground before him. Jairus, the one responsible for teaching the people God's word, had actually learned that the same strong arm of the Lord spoken of in Isaiah that you just heard redeemed Israel from slavery in Egypt and redeemed Israel from the bondage in Babylon and would rebuild the people of Israel after their captivity. That same strong arm was revealed in Christ Jesus. Jarius had come to understand this. He knew as well that Jesus would Help his little girl. Now, St. Matthew indicates that Jairus' daughter is already dead. Saints Mark and Luke say she's on the verge of dying. Regardless, death is in the air. Ever been in a situation like that where death is in the air? I would say death was in the air when B and I went to go see Vivian just a couple days ago. Death was in the air. We actually performed what's called the commendation of the dying with her. Praise be to God, she's doing quite well. Quite well. But death was in the air here, making Jarius' daughter unclean. Jarius is there to ask the clean, namely Jesus, to touch the unclean, namely his daughter. Now I've got a spoiler alert for you. Pay attention as to who touches who in the next few moments. Who touches who and what happens? Well, Jesus does not disappoint. He goes with Jarius. And as they travel to the bedside of this 12-year-old girl, large crowds, this gaggle of people, they flock around them. Their march, though, is interrupted. There is this woman, a woman with more than just an illness, more than just a condition. This nameless woman has a scourge. For 12 years, she has suffered from a flow of blood. She's probably, she probably doesn't even remember what it's, not, what it's like, actually, to not have to deal with this. My guess is every time the bleeding started, she always had to wonder if it was going to stop, ever. Commentators, if you read them, suspect a uterine hemorrhage. Well, but you know what? What do they know? This scourge is slowly stealing her life. It's consumed most of her savings, but worse, it's kept her away from the temple. She was verboten to go where God promised to be present, to pour out His mercy and His grace. She couldn't be near there. This scourge made her gang, she was just as untouchable as a leper. Oh, there's no doubt she tried everything. The doctors gave their solutions, all for a fee, of course. Then there were the homeopathic remedies. There were solutions shared by friends. There were clinical trials. There's Eastern medicine. There's Western medicine. There's hemp. There's vitamins. There's essential oils. You name it. Nothing worked. And she kept 
getting worse. But she has heard about Jesus. Jesus who chased demons from the demoniac. Jesus who brought life to dead limbs, paralyzed legs, and withered hands. Jesus who brought healing to those consumed by fevers. He cured lepers. Imagine this woman's joy when she hears that Jesus is passing through her town. Faith cometh by hearing. And she heard of Jesus. And she put that tiny mustard seed of faith in him, sight unseen, saying, If only I touch his garment, I will be made well. She believed Jesus was powerful enough to do with a touch what all of the doctors had been unable to do in 12 years. Now I know it sounds a little superstitious maybe to our ears, but this woman, she is on to something. She knows, just like Jairus knows, that divine omnipotent power resides in Jesus. So much so that when the clean touches the unclean, the unclean is made clean. And that Jesus is not polluted by somebody else's pollution. It's just the opposite. His cleanness, His holiness, it completely removes their pollution. But what if the unclean touches the clean? Will it have the same effect? She has the faith. She believes that it will. If only I touch his garment. Actually, that's, that's the tassels that a devout Jewish man would wear. There were four tassels. Kind of like when you graduated from high school or college and you grabbed that tassel and you moved it from one side of the mortar board to the other. That's kind of what hangs on his shirt. She said, if I only touch one of those, if I only touch that, but she's got to be quiet about this. Nobody can know. Not even Jesus. But of course Jesus does know. Though he is surrounded by others, Jesus knows the touch of faith. He loves faith. And even though the woman sneaked up behind him, and he's on his way to raise a dead girl in the company of a distraught father. He has time for her, even calling her daughter. Isn't that fascinating? He's going to heal one man's daughter, but yet he stops to heal another daughter. He said, take heart, daughter. Your faith, as it's written on your sheet there, says... Your faith has made you well, but better translated, as you heard me say, your faith has saved you. Moreover, this scourge, it's gone forever. Again, you touch him and his power comes out of him to you. And that he's not polluted by pollution. My pollution or yours. Our pollution comes from every place we turn. From the pornography that we see to the lewd messages of just bumper stickers to the adulterous relationships we have to the things that we scheme or entice or force away for ourselves from others, things that are not ours. Not to mention our unclean thoughts, which trigger our unclean tongues to speak unclean words and to perform unclean deeds done in both public as well as private. It's pollution. All of it. We have touched unclean things, sometimes on accident, most times on purpose. And this has left us Unclean. But you see, that's why you came here this morning. 
when unclean people reach out and they lay their sins on Jesus, their sins, their uncleanliness, it's taken away. Just like the woman's scourge, his cleanness makes you clean. His holiness makes you holy. Do you remember years ago, the Dawn commercial? Years ago, years ago, I spent a, a wasted youth watching television. The commercial, the Dawn dish soap. The Dawn dish soap, just one drop drops in this water of grease. You remember? What happened to the grease? Wait. Just moves away. It's like Jesus in your pollution. One touch goes away. His cleanness makes you clean. His holiness makes you holy. His word, his touch, his love, his truth, his righteousness, all of this goes out from him to you. Totally different from anything else you can ever touch. Jesus' touch initially came to you in those baptismal waters. Maybe not those, but some just like it. Where Christ sanctified and instituted all waters to be a blessed flood and a lavish washing away of sin. In those baptismal waters, we were made a member of His church where He then called you son, daughter, Jesus' touch came when at the outset of this very service, the triune name of God was placed upon you. And it'll happen at the end of the service as well. Jesus' touch came when the words of absolution were spoken over you, when His law and His gospel were read and preached into your ear. And what do you think happens when you come to the rail to receive the very body and blood of Jesus? What do you think, beloved? The clean touches the unclean, rendering you clean. And now you belong. Your faith has saved you. And that's why you come here this morning. Well, the scene with the woman had to strengthen Jarius' faith. I mean, his expectations, after he sees this, I mean, his expectations, they've got to be soaring. Jesus then enters his home to find folks who are already gathered for the funeral. They're already making out luncheon plans. But Jesus tells him the girl is merely sleeping. Sleeping? Indeed, that's all death is to Jesus. And the only one to believe him is Jairus. After forcing all of the unbelievers out, Jesus does it again. The clean touches the unclean, the dead. And what do you know? The little girl rises. And if it was any of my little girls, which aren't little anymore, the first thing out of their mouth would be, where's my cell phone? But she rises what a glorious moment that was. Folks, this very same Jesus places his gentle, holy touch upon you here, taking your scourge and making you holy. And this very same Jesus who walked with Jairus to rise his daughter will one day stand upon the earth calling out of the grave all those who have fallen asleep for he has promised to wake us up on the last day and to serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. That's who he is. That's who he is. And that's what he's promised. And faith clings to promises. The clean for the unclean. In the holy name of Jesus, Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus our Lord.